Hey traders, checking into the stock market today. So we started off very strong on the morning, but did not see follow through and the bears took over. We'll look at some of the potential clues that were there as for the bears to be watching for. We're now looking for daily higher lows to try and form what needs to happen for those to shape up. And we'll go over a stair step strategy trade review. And it was a good one. So I just recorded this whole video and had the wrong screen up and it was a really good one too. So I'll try and do it again. So SPY, we had a morning that was in complete control of the bulls and then we faded and gave it all back with some significant bear momentum into the end of the day. So there were a couple of clues to be watching for, but number one is we never set a five minute higher low and higher high on QQQ or SPY at any point through the entire day. We saw a big time bull move we started the morning with XLF at the high of the day, QQQ at the low of the day in the first minute. Then they flipped in the second minute and then every major sector went up. So you can see the first 10 minutes we were chopping around a little bit inverse and then all bulls joined team bull and we went up for 40 minutes. But we never set a five minute higher low and higher high. I can't stress enough how important it is for sustainable moves to have trends and follow through. Otherwise, you can give that whole move back. And QQQ has been doing that a lot over the last few weeks where we see a significant bull move in the morning and then give back a significant amount, never setting a five minute higher low and higher high. So this morning we had a stair step short strategy on QQQ. And I was watching QQQ more than SPY because QQQ has been weaker. And I was watching, okay, are QQQ bulls now gonna start to take the lead a little bit after being a weaker sector over the last couple of weeks? So again, on our YouTube channel, we've got in-depth video about the stair step strategy. And I just did a video over the weekend about wedges, if you haven't seen that one yet. But I was live streaming and I wasn't trading today much. So I did not take this trade because I was out late last night seeing Tivari Corporation and drinking beer when it was supposed to be my bedtime. So that puts me in a state where I know I am not my most efficient, highest performing machine trading. So I take the morning off, but was highlighting live the stair step short strategy, which is going short when you lose the pattern of a higher low every candle, when you're very overextended, which would have been triggered at 362.84. So let's say you go short at 362.80 and you put your stop at 363.25. You're risking 45 cents. As soon as you drop down to 362.35, you can sell half your position and be risk-free with a stop over the high of the day. And then if you just let that trade play out all day because you never stop out, it's a solid win by the close. Granted, QQQ does not move a whole lot and you can do it with large capital. You know, if you do that with a thousand shares, you end up up, you know, $2,500 on the day. That's a solid win. But if you don't have $363,000 to throw around on trade, you can either do options and they're obviously a lot higher risk and reward and weekly options for SPY or for QQQ 364 puts in just this drop here, some of them went up 50% or that one specifically went up 50%. And by the end of the day, it was probably up multiple hundreds of percent. Obviously the risk is you can drop 50% if you're wrong, but that's one way to use larger capital or you should say get more leverage for smaller capital. Or you could look at this signal and enter SQQQ, the leveraged ETF to have three times the volatility, but you're doing it all based on the signals of this QQQ chart. So bears took over. One thing that our resident bear Gotch pointed out as well was low volume. If you look at SPY's first hour of volume, it was not even comparable to any first hour of volume last week. And it was even half of some of the first hours of last week's trading. And when you see a massive bull move, which is zero volume behind it, yes, we know SPY doesn't need volume to go up if we're talking big picture daily uptrends, but Definitely just a little clue to add to the bigger picture here. And the bears followed through. Into the end of the day, we had a showdown and a crossroads. This was a tightening 15 minute range. And how this breaks, I was watching QQQ again, how this breaks is gonna dictate significantly sentiment into tomorrow. You either confirm a 15 minute trend change, which sets an hourly higher low and gives you an hourly equilibrium potentially setting up an hourly trend change into tomorrow, knowing that we need hourly trend changes 
to set daily higher lows. So that would have been on the table with a bull break or you roll over. So at 2.45, I posted this message, pretty important next 15 minutes here to set the stage for power hour momentum. Hourly higher low and tightening range or a bear break or a or bear full takeover. And we got bear full takeover. So a lot of momentum to the downside into the close, no sign of a daily higher low and starting from square one because we need an hourly trend change for a daily higher low to be set. And because of this weak close, Next time we bounce on QQQ and SPY, we're just watching for an hourly lower high. So those are very two, two very different places to be depending on how that little half an hour window breaks that tightening range. You're either starting back at scratch with the bears in complete short-term control or you have some established trend change attempt into the following day. So it remains, bears in control of the daily as long as we're in a downtrend the bulls must hold the low of 426.36 and break 441.68 to confirm the daily trend change. We filled a little gap. We closed at the low of the day. And now we're watching for our clues. What does the volume look like? What does the retracement size look like? At this point, we've retraced about 45% of this move. If we drop with a red day tomorrow, we're then going to be looking at a 50% plus retracement. And rather than seeing a potential trend change be a possible scenario, it's then going to start to favor an equilibrium, higher, low, lower, high, if we can hold support. The last thing the bulls want to see tomorrow is a high volume red day because that will have us looking at, uh uh-oh, are we about to do the same thing as last time, give it all back to fresh lows when the big bear volume showed up? This was last Monday or two Mondays ago. So if big bear volume shows up and we have a red day tomorrow, it's going to be, uh uh-oh, we're headed right back to our lows. And there's clues we can look for. There are sectors that will hit fresh lows likely before SPY and QQQ. XLV is our lead major sector bear. It's about 1.15% from a fresh low. SPY is about 2% from a fresh low. SMH is very correlated to QQQ, but it's weaker in the short term. SMH is closer to breaking to a lower low than QQQ is. So if either of these, these two sectors break to fresh lows, it increases probabilities that the other sectors will as well. The financial sector was our lead bull. It hit all-time highs today. Look at this uptrend resistance line that we keep rejecting from. We had a little gap fill at 38.63. And anything above 37.49 is a daily high or low. But bulls really want to keep the daily uptrend going here in the financial sector. Because again, this is the the saving grace for the bulls out of our major sectors over the last couple of weeks. IWM, still watching our tightening multiple day equilibrium here. Two day time frame condenses it down a little bit more clearly, but how this breaks is going to have significant implications for me. And we're heading down towards support 216.76. If it holds, we will continue to tighten up. How this breaks is going to have significant impact because the weekly chart is fairly close to rolling over with a bearish EMA 12 and 26 cross if it does roll over, and that is on the table if this two-day equilibrium breaks bear. So we know healthcare is weak. The most important resistance for all of these names has been set now, our daily lower high, and it's all about the low of yesterday, and the bulls must confirm an hourly trend change for daily higher lows to be shaping up. Bulls have a lot of work to do. They have proving to do on the hourly and on the daily. And the dollar is close to breaking out and continuing its weekly, monthly, and daily uptrend. And we know that if you're bullish commodities or crypto or stocks, you want to see a weak dollar. Yet here we have the dollar close to breaking out for another leg to the upside if 94.50 breaks. And then from there, we're looking at 94.74. Look what's after 94.74. Nothing. Look at the resistance here. We would be hitting levels that we have not seen in a year and a half. That is the next key level from here. The VIX. We are watching a tightening pattern on the VIX for a four-hour equilibrium. And now we got a daily tightening range to be watching with our high, low, lower high. And trying for the higher low here. So watching this equilibrium for the rest of the week. If we get a little bit of bull follow through, anything under 2489 is a lower high. And it's going to be worth watching to see how this tightening range breaks 
once it eventually does. We had one back here, tightening daily range, and it broke bear on August 6th, and it followed through with that bear break. What happened on August 6th? Five days of bulls in a row. So keeping an eye on that VIX tightening daily equilibrium. AMC still in the swing trade. We came close to making a key break of 38.78, but we failed by 12 cents today. So that's giving us a daily equilibrium with a weekly inside bar. I will exit if 35.64 breaks, giving a little bit of wiggle room under that level. Bulls must break 38.78. Had a strong day in GME and AMC today, but they faded with the rest of the market. And I'm seeing AMC correlate to QQQ more so than I can ever recall. And GME did the same thing. Big breakouts, but then giving the vast majority of that move back as we correlate with the broader market. Wasn't as bad as the broader market, but definitely correlated. So next time we bounce on a lot of names, we're just scouting hourly lower highs. So again, it's back to square one for trying to set up an hourly trend change. How we started the morning started to set up an hourly trend change that we obviously did not pull off. So next time we bounce, just an hourly lower high has to be a big enough bounce to create space for an hourly trend change. Then we zoom out. Can the bulls confirm a daily trend change? So bears are still comfortable in the short term. Volume is key tomorrow. And if we see red notable volume and a red day, we're going to be talking tomorrow in the market video. Uh Uh-oh, are our lows about to be tested and are we headed to lower lows? So key support level. Bitcoin still real strong, all-time highs coming into the picture, keeping an eye on that sector for the potential of euphoria, and there are plenty of stocks that go along with it. But other than that, the bulls must show up and set up hourly trend changes back in their favor tomorrow. All right, feel free to ask any questions. Hope you all had a good weekend. Don't forget to do good things out there. Check out the Wedges video published over the weekend. We'll have some trader chats to upload with some TCG members in the near term. And I hope you have a good rest of your day.